Hi everyone, it's me again. Long time no see, long time no hear since my latest uh, video that's been posted I think six months ago pretty much and I wanted to show you again my newest additions to my cameo collection. thing is um, I'm trying to do the video as short as possible because they are getting longer and longer <laughs> it's kind of uh, annoying to have to watch uh, these really long videos I understand that totally um, I think I'm going to start with this one as um, I got quite a few uh, since I posted the last video in, in October it came in this lovely again uh, little case um, this is from an antiques uh, jeweler um, shop or um, company uh, they sell antiques uh, or antique jewelry and uh, I got this for my birthday uh, last October and it's one of my favorite cameos really uh, in my whole collection it is such a amazing amazing cameo um, I hope you can see the detail I hope it's focusing well enough it is a cameo that is um, <clears throat> depicting a famous uh, mythological figure it's Clythe or uh, Clitia or Clytia I don't know how to pronounce it she has a quite a sad beautiful story behind it. it was a nymph that was um let's say the girlfriend of um apollo the sun god and uh he betrayed her or had an affair with another uh nymph i think it's a nymph uh Clytia. and she found out and uh got so jealous and heartbroken that she went to this other girl's father and told him about uh, his daughter's adultery uh, not adultery a affair sorry with uh, her boyfriend um, uh, Apollo and the father was so upset that he punished his daughter by by um putting burying her into sand and letting her die like that and apollo got so heartbroken that he um pledged to never look at clytia ever again he kind of dropped her abandoned her after having um cheated on her wow really nice and uh, to punish her he did never look at her ever again and she died of uh, love of broken heart she um, went on top of a mountain i think and she stood there all naked she took off all her clothes in despair and stood there for nine days and nine nights uh, longing for apollo to look at her and take her back and each day when he would uh, get on his uh, char, chariot, I think you say, yeah, chariot, um, and drive up on the skies, you know, to start the day, um, he he would just go by his, uh, <laughs> by his task and never look at her. And she would look at the sky, you know, and um, after after him and uh yeah and then she i think she died in despair and uh i can't remember if it was aphrodite one of the goddesses who took pity on her and um and turned her into a, a sunflower uh we know that sunflowers uh always turn their head towards the sun towards the light and that is how the myth of the sunflower went to uh yeah to start so um yeah and i think it's a beautiful story and you can see the sadness of uh, this nymph 
um, and the intricate hairdo. Actually, it was uh, a very popular subject for cameo carvers. Some of the most beautiful cameos were um, carved after the subject. Uh, very famous ones that are in museums now by, for example, a famous cameo carver from Italy, obviously named Saulini, for example. Uh, but obviously so high priced and unavailable, unattainable that, yeah, it's um, really... Uh, uh, just, um, I think I was so lucky to find this by chance and I totally fell in love with it. It's it's difficult to find a good quality one and I think this one is amazing. It's set in a 14 carats uh, reddish gold mount with little seed pearls. Uh, eight little seed pearls, very, very tiny and the frame, uh, the mount is very, very unusual as well. It's uh, according to the art historians that work in this uh, shop or company, uh, it's from the 1880s. It is a brooch and the clasp has been replaced la uh, later, obviously, in the 20th century. It's a rolling clasp. It works really nice, but yeah, I guess they the, the original clasp got damaged, probably. I think it might have been a, a lever or a C-clasp, I don't know. Anyway, it's such an amazing piece. And I wanted to show you guys the... Ah, wait, um, the images I, uh, I took. There you go. This is the bust, the statue. That was um, started the... Uh, how you say... Uh, it was sculpted and the, the, the cameo carvers um, based, the, um, took, took inspiration from this and based their carvings on, on this one. You can see the hair dough and uh, yeah, this is a close up. It's so beautiful. Hope you can see it well. And this was the original drawing after which the statue was done. Yeah, so that's uh, Clytia or Clythe. Uh, where is she here? Okay. Gonna try being a little quicker with this uh, video, otherwise it's gonna take forever. Uh, yeah, exactly. The, this is the next one. This is an amazing, amazing, amazing one. It's very, very big and very heavy. It's um, 20, almost 21 grams. It's really heavy. It's a, whoa, it's a rock. <laughs> and I'm sorry, I forgot to say that the Clytean um, nymph uh, is, a, was a, is a sardonyx helmet shell. This one as well. You can see the figure is right, nicely snow white. This one, I, I'm not sure if it depicts Adonis or, I think, rather uh, Narcissus. You know, the, the boy that, or young man that fell in love with himself, uh, with his image that he saw in a, in a pool of water or in a spring, whatever. And he got punished and turned into uh, the Narcissus flower. And this cameo is uh, set in um, 10 carat rolled gold mount, a very, very plain one with a C clasp. Um, I suspect it was uh, f uh, mounted in or set in England. These simple frames are, or mounts are very typical of the British um, goldsmith uh, work or works. Um, you can see it, it also has a signature there, carved, and um, I think it depicts Adonis. Um, rolled gold means it is, uh, um, uh, it is gold that was uh, rolled over a silver uh, base or silver mount. You 
put um, plates or sheets of gold and pressed it onto the silver. So it is very durable, like uh, solid gold. And um, it the the period, according to the antique seller, I got it from eBay, says it's of the from the eighteen thirties, eighteen fifties, from eighteen thirty to eighteen fifty, pretty much. So it's like late Georgian, early Victorian, and I could like agree with it because if you look at paintings and sculptures from the t period. It has those the, the typical facial features. It has the nice uh, typical um, depiction of the period of how they depicted young boys or young men with the curly hair and the headband. It's very typical. And I want to show you what I, why I tend to think that it is. Um, Narcissus and not Adonis. I found online uh, several um, statues that I, you know, I, I did a research because I, I'm very curious about things and um, I put together this collage of different statues depicting um, Narcissus. And uh, on top here is my cameo. I um, rotated it so that it would match these statues. And you can see it's really, really close to these uh, depictions of Narcissus. This is a painting, though. This is a painting, um, yeah, by an Italian, anyway, painter. And the statues are... Pretty much. Uh, this is a, actually a Hermaphroditus. Uh, this one. And yeah, yeah, but the others are all of Narcissus. I think it's so beautiful. And this is a brooch only. I plan on having a goldsmith add. Uh, two little loops here with a laser obviously because otherwise you would have to take the cameo out of the mount to not damage it so that it could be worn as a pendant. I'm saying this because mm, the needle is centered behind the cameo and it should be a little on top so that it, uh, when you wear it it doesn't tilt towards the front which this one does because it's too heavy so good or intelligent goldsmiths or setters would do this you know putting the needle a little further up and not centered but yeah I thought if it's worn uh, on a chain um, I could pass a uh, pin to stabilize it more if I wear it as a brooch um, through the loops I mean that the goldsmith would that would add and otherwise wear it on a chain as a pendant it has a C clasp and it's a very early 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 piece I think it's gorgeous um, the next one let me think Next one is a special one as well, and it's um, this one. It's the only one that I got in the original period historic case. It's so amazing. I got this um, like the like the Narcissus one, like this one from Ohio. It's a it's a really by chance, um, from an antique shop, from eBay, no, from, yeah, from eBay, uh, you can see the original case, it says, um, Henry Earls, watchmaker and jeweler in Shoreditch, which is a, a, a part of London, I, I, London, UK, I looked at it. And this one, you can see the box is quite old. 
this one is very very crisp and beautiful it was extremely dirty the, the frame it was like almost black and um it is a 14 carats uh gold ma mount um and very beautiful f uh, setting with these circles here and it is like new it has amazing detail you can see the little ivy leaves these are not wine leaves but ivy leaves and if you see that on a woman carved into a cameo uh, it is always depicting uh, the goddess uh, Fides in Latin Fides in English it's pronounced Fides obviously F-I-D-E-S Fides is uh, is the word uh, on which the word um, fidelity is based on. Um, so it's the, the the allegory or allegory, I think you say in, in English, uh, of uh, fidelity. It was a gift that usually you would do give to a bride or a soon to be bride, fiance, you know. Or for a for an anniversary of marriage, you know, it's very lovely, I think, and it's sardonyx shell as well. It has a, a an interesting uh, rolling clasp that closes on top, and obviously was uh, replaced at a later date, but the needle is original. And yeah, it's. A very lovely crisp cameo I hope you can see the detail of it yeah so it's cr really cool that it c comes in uh, the original case uh, which I really love um, thing is thing is um, that yeah it's sorry it's the only one that i have in the original case so the next one is this one i'm going by my list otherwise i'm losing track of all of them this one is really really cool this one i got from uh, neuilly in france and um this one is cool because it's <clears throat> the first and only cameo I got that is set in a in a, an alloy or metal that I didn't know existed. Actually, it's called Pompon. Uh, it's uh, spelled P O M P O double N E. Pomponi in English, but it's French. It's Pompon. Which is a medal that was invented in France, I think, in the era of Louis XVI, Louis the Sixteenth, if I'm correct, or Louis Fourteenth, even. No, I think Sixteenth. I would have to look it up again. I'm sorry. And this was uh, allowed. You know, the um, goldsmiths were allowed to use this metal or alloy uh, because gold was only allowed to be used by the royals royal family whatever um, and it was quite popular in France it's something like um, like uh, pinchbeck in England but it gives you the pompon gives you sort of like a brownish copperish color it's not yellow gold colored like uh, pinchbeck and obviously this is a uh, sardonyx again because this figure is through and through nicely clean snow white and it depicts as, as you as you guys know by now you can see the wine leaves not ivy leaves but wine leaves and the grapes it's uh, a bacanti or bacant in French, or a minad, it's called as well in for the ancient Rome 
an ancient Roman period, the Grecian, ancient Grecian period. It's a Bacante, I think it's, it's correct. I'm not sure. Sorry. <clears throat> please, please feel free to, <clears throat> to uh, comment in the comment section and correct stuff I, I'm doing wrong. Yeah, it's really beautiful. It has a C class, but this time on the other end, I suspect it was uh, maybe set wrongly, upside down, but yeah, who cares? It's really beautiful. The next one is um, Cameo that I, sorry guys, that I got from eBay. And it's absolutely amazing. It's a cameo that is um, depicting Hebe or Hebe uh, for ancient Grecian uh, period and for the Roman period, ancient Roman period, it is uh, Juventas, the goddess of youth and cup bearer of the gods. She would uh, feed in the Olymp, the gods and goddesses with ambrosia and nectar so that they would remain immortal. You can see here the classic um, depiction of Hebe, how she is feeding Zeus or Jupiter or his eagle. So it could be he himself or his eagle. And according to the myth, it's his daughter <clears throat> if I'm correct, yeah, that's a, that's an uh, sardonyx shell as well, and uh, the quality is beautiful. Problem is, I have I have to set it, um, and I plan to send it to Italy because I can't afford to have it set here, honestly gonna cost another like seven or eight hundred bucks Switzerland is prohibitive for stuff like this no way I mean the cameo is of the 1850s maybe 1840s and it was a how do you say a steal on eBay I got it for I think three hundred dollars which is the worth of this one would be over over a thousand or more it's amazing in quality look at the little veil and the detail of the feathers it's amazing yeah so and the next one is oh yeah this one i got recently i love it it's so beautiful this is another Bacanti or Minid. It's quite raised. As you can see, they are more valuable if the shell is like 3D, you know, if it if you can see it's it's um raised a bit, you know what I mean. Look at it from the side. The detail is amazing on this one as well. This one is from the 1870s, I would say. You can see how beautiful she is with her grape wreath, wine leaves, and the lovely, sweet face. And uh, let me put it on here. Maybe you see it better. Um, I don't. I don't think that the loop here is original i don't know if the setting is original could be it's a very simple setting and very nicely and intelligently done i think and it is sardonyx as well a lighter one and it's a it's a vermeil uh, metal which is uh, like rolled gold actually it's rose gold plated in English. It's very durable. It's like it's going to be like solid gold. It won't tarnish. It's rose gold. It's really nice. 
Um, I got this from a lady in, on Etsy uh, uh, from Zurich, go figure, that saved me customs fees because I'm in Bern and she's in Zurich. So that was a steal and it was also free shipping. And I got this from for close to nothing. It's very, very amazing in quality as well. I think I paid maybe, don't know, 200, I think. It's so lovely. I always fall in love with the face, mostly, and the crispness and detail of the carvings, the complexity of the piece, and then obviously the, the how do you say, the condition, if it's good. It has a few lines but nothing major and if you clean it well and oil it it uh, is usually you can hide any scratches because it needs some mm, some feeding you know the oil will fill up tiny tiny cracks or lines you should do it anyway like once a year massaging it so yeah and the last one, uh, cameo-wise, that I got is these, these ear rings uh, that I got from Rome. It's a, it's a shop that sells antique uh, reproductions. Uh, Molded from originals. This is a Bacante or Menad again, and this is the god Dionysus or Bacchus. And so they go really well together. She's like his groupie, you know, if he was a like a famous rock star or something. And it's a hook earrings, and they are very beautiful. They are uh, dipped in four, 24 karat gold. They stay as they are. The quality is really good. And the material of these earrings, this is the logo. They are pretty sturdy. Material is a secret, is a patented, I think, um, sort of like a glass paste. And it looks like alabaster or ivory. And it's super cool. The shop, I don't want to do any, any, um, how do you say, um, commer commercial, you know, advertising. But it's a shop in Rome. You can look it up. It's called Serra, actually. It's really, they sell amazing jewelry. So yeah, I think that's it for, for now, you guys. I think that was quite a few cameos, and um, this time I tried to be quick so that it wouldn't be um, too um, annoying. Sorry if my, if my camera panning or um, camera, I mean, I have a smartphone isn't ideal but yeah so that's the ones i got yeah my favorite i think is the clythia clythia because um of her story as well just so beautiful sweet and sad and intricate but all of them are amazing. Each one has an amazing story. Um, these are from Rome. This is from Zurich. This is from London, actually. This one. This is from Neuilly, France. This one is from... Ohio, as I said earlier, this one with the original case, and 
the Adonis, uh, sorry, Adonis, Narcissus is from Ohio as well. And the Clythia or Clytia is from Berlin. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, yeah, see you next time with maybe more treasures. It's not like I'm actively on the lookout, just, you know, from time to time I see something and then if it's interesting enough I have to get it, if it's possible, you know, budget-wise. Yeah, it's like other women <laughs> usually buy shoes or handbags. Oops, not me. <laughs> So yeah, there you go. <laughs> Have a nice Sunday, you guys, and uh, see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>